If you've ever played Super Smash Brothers and you're not very good at it, you probably just button mash. For my workflow today, I'm going to show you how to button mash, but for coloring. What I mean by that is just mess around, fail a lot until something works. But the best thing about Zcam is how easy it is to color the footage and the tool that Zcam gives us to color our footage is impeccable. Let me show you. I've dragged down three clips into Final Cut here. Now it doesn't matter which editor you use, uh, I do prefer Final Cut, but if you're in Resolve or Premiere, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is download the Zlog color grading plugin from Zcam themselves. I'll have the link in the description below for this. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and drag that effect onto your clip and voila, that's how you color grade your footage. Seriously, that's really about it. Um, if you want to go in and adjust the settings, you can, uh, but really this is about what I do. If you expose properly and you do the white balance properly, you're good to go. In case you're not good to go, let's kind of show you what these settings do. If you're shooting on an E2 M4, you really need to overexpose your camera as much as you can without blowing out your highlights. If you're shooting an S6, you've got a little bit more room, and I typically overexpose by one or one and a half stops. I'm assuming the F6 is relatively close to the S6. If you don't know anything about waveforms or other color assist tools, I'd advise you looking at other color tutorials first, and then coming back to this that's catered towards Zcam. Typically, even if I do overexpose like I should have done here, I will still bump up the exposure just a little bit. Then I'll head down to the gamma, which in the simplest forms is just contrast, really. You can see that it's really bringing the shadows down and the image here looks really nice. It was that simple. I like the color. I like everything about it. It's fantastic. We're gonna drag the Z-Log color grading plugin back over to this next clip. Um, again, it looks great. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work to this to get the look that I want. And to do so, I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit, but raise the gain and shift this offset up just a tad, which is really the blacks. And then bring this gamma down to add that contrast into the shadows. Nice. Move on to our next shot here. Same thing as always. Look at that, it's already beautiful. Um, if you know anything about waveforms here, you can see that I'm not clipping anything in the whites and I'm not crushing anything in the blacks. I have detail in every color of the spectrum here, even in this really bright portion over on the right side. Uh, I really like this shot, but I do think I actually wanna raise the exposure quite a bit here. So let me do that. I'm gonna raise both the exposure and the gain and pull this offset down and use my gamma to balance it back out. Maybe pull my lifts down. I am starting to crush the black, so let me bring that gamma back up a little bit here. Bring this exposure down. Maybe the gain. Bring our lifts back up so we get our detail. This is a little bit brighter uh, and I like it. Clearly you see how easy this is. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple more settings before I send you off on your way. And some of these settings are the purple edge remover and the saturation correction. And if you select both of these, you can really see what they do. Some people really love this. Using the purple edge remover will put some greens back into your shot that uh, may need it. However, in this shot, because it's already very green, I don't want it. The saturation correction sometimes does weird things to the reds. Uh, but it has worked really well in specific situations when it comes to bringing back skin tones. I've also noticed that if I shoot too warm in a project, rather than changing the temperature, I can go down to the look and feel and choose a cool neutral. This is almost kind of doing an orange teal look right away, but leaning more to the cooler side. And then you can also add more warmth back into the shot. We are getting a very vintage retro vibe here now with this. Um, honestly, that's not too bad. I'm serious. Go out, shoot, learn the exposures, come back into post, throw on that Z-Log color plugin and fail. 
Fail as many times as you have to until you really figure it out. Learn your scopes and waveforms in your camera so that way you know exactly what you'll need to get when it comes to post-production and coloring. However, we're missing one step. We've done the color correction and we've converted this to Rec. 709, but we haven't done anything creatively with it. And I gotta be honest, like I said, I am no master colorist, so I use LUTs. Yes, I use LUTs, but to be fair, I have made custom LUTs. I'd recommend going into Lightroom or Photoshop and trying to replicate something that you like and then adjusting from there. There are plenty of tutorials online of how to create your own LUTs. In Final Cut, to add some LUTs, I always add an adjustment layer on top of everything. Um, my corrections always go on the clip and the actual gray just goes on top of everything just to kind of blend it all together. Now Final Cut Pro does have a LUT tool, however I do use Color Finale Pro to make some slight changes as I believe it's a really powerful plugin. It's almost like having a mini DaVinci Resolve. To add my LUT with Color Finale Pro, there is this little LUT browser here. And you can see some of my favorite LUTs that I use. I really like White and Reverie stuff. Um, this Amber LUT of mine is kind of the LUT that I really enjoy and I've merged from a bunch of different LUTs that I use. As you can see here, if I turn it off and on, it's a pretty vintage look. It's sometimes a little bit too much. And I think for this specific video, it may be too much. It doesn't look bad, but I think instead what I'm gonna do is throw on this Fuji LUT. I don't know where I got it from, but I really like it. It can be really over the top when it comes to highlights and saturation. So what I'm gonna do for this is pull it back down to about 30%. Let's try 45%. Because the Z-Cam produces such beautiful colors and really natural colors, you don't have to go over the top with a LUT or a creative grade. What I really like to do is always get that natural look and then throw in some slight changes to colors with LUTs or even doing your own LUT, which sometimes I will do. If you own another camera, there may be a, a bit more of a process to it. And if you're interested, I could do that down the road. But for now, I'm gonna stick to using the Z-Log color plugin because I'm lazy. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one.